Um, other vaccines being tested? Yes, there are a number. Um, just to give you a note, this is how the New York Times is um, tracking it. So there's a number available. And you might have heard of some of the leading vaccine candidates, of course. Uh, just to note that there's a lot of candidates um, that are entering something called phase three trials, which these are the trials with tens of thousands of people. So if they manage to get past this with uh, data showing that it's safe and effective, we might be seeing more, um, more vaccines approved as a result uh, from this group. Um, so the COVID variants, so chances are you've been hearing in the news um, that there's a certain variants of COVID that one that originated in the UK and another that originated in South Africa. Both of these two variants, um, they're not more fatal, but they are more contagious. So that means if you're in the same room with someone who has these variants, you might, you know, you'd be catching them a little bit easier than if you, uh, than with someone who just had the original version. And in terms of whether these variants work, um, have any effect on whether the vaccine is effective, most people in the scientific community feel that's unlikely the case. Um, and there's some new evidence, it's very preliminary at this point, but there is some evidence saying that um, the vaccine, at least the Pfizer vaccine does work a bit better um, and works as well um, on the variants as it does on the original, but there's more research needed here in this area to confirm this. Uh, do I have to pay for a vaccine? The answer is no. Um, so the doses will be provided at no cost, but it should be noted that there is an administration fee that um, uh, will be associated with this. This should be covered by your insurance. Or if you're uninsured, there is a government uh, fund that can um, you can use to um, uh, defer these costs. So um, we provided the link here for more information. Uh, when will it be available to the general public? Right now, the supply is limited, but it will increase over time. You know, there's estimates that late, sometime later this year, it should be available to all adults. But again, to note that it may not be available for children, especially young children, until more research is done. And in terms of prioritization, the CDC has advised states to prioritize a couple of different groups, um, healthcare workers, nursing home staff and residents, frontline and essential workers, um, and people over 75 years old. Um, some states are even thinking, are even asking um, people over 65 years old um, to be prioritized. And I'll pass this to Casey. Yes, so a lot of these decisions are actually being made um, on a very a relatively local level at the state level in terms of who will get the vaccine and when. Um, so I just wanted to point out that if you go to the Ohio Department of Health, they do have a tab for the COVID-19 vaccine. And if you click on that tab, it will bring you to a page where you can find some pretty, um, uh, some pretty good graphics walking you through um, the different phases and who's included as well as um, a very detailed list of who exactly is in each of those phases. Um, so if you need more information, I would recommend you go to the Ohio Department of Health. Great, and so um, who is making these decisions? Um, as Casey mentioned, a lot of it is going to be through the state level, but again, we'd like to um, emphasize that uh, the, the federal government, a lot of the best scientists have been thinking about this issue too. So, you know, they've been thinking in terms of the science, the ethics, the implementation, um, and, and trying to think about it uh, with uh, inequities in, in health and injustice. And um, so there's a lot of factors going into figuring out who to prioritize um, for the vaccine. But ultimately, state and local leaders have the, the ultimate say on how they will be distributing the vaccines. Uh, where will I need to go to get the vaccines? So it's the places you probably expect, like a doctor's office, retail pharmacies, hospitals, and federal qualified health centers. Uh, it's best to check your local government websites for more information on where to go. Um, are there risks associated with getting a COVID vaccine? Um, so I mentioned it a little bit. And um, like, uh, as I mentioned, this is a little bit similar to certain types of flu vaccines. Uh, in our breakout group, we actually talked a little bit about um, a flu vaccine, you know, kind of causing you a little bit of, a no, you know, not a great day for, for a few days sort of feeling. Um, I know when I get a flu vaccine, I feel like I got punched in the arm for a few days. Uh, so um, it can be a little bit sucky to get these symptoms. They're, they're not 
they're not super common, but they're not uncommon. So you might be getting these types of things, but they can disappear within a few hours or a few days. And actually these symptoms are a signal that the vaccine is, is doing its job and it's building your body's immunity to the virus. And the risks associated with not getting a vaccine, um, unfortunately you or your loved one may contract COVID-19, which is a potentially fatal disease. Um, you may get mild symptoms, but you may also get severe symptoms too. Um, no, everyone is at risk of getting severe symptoms. So that's something to keep in mind. And the symptoms, um, chances are you, you've heard of the COVID-19 symptoms, but just letting you know it can result in long-term symptoms for weeks or months and inability to work, hospitalization, or even death. Um, so are there places you can go to receive trusted information? Um, well, yes. Uh, some of the places that I mentioned prior uh, where we got a lot of this information actually, and uh, the Ohio Department of Public Health is of course one of them. Um, should I get vaccinated, vaccinated even if I don't have risk factors? Um, so the more people who get vaccinated, the more likely we'll, we will be able to slow or stop the spread of this virus. And, um, oh, I'm sorry, Casey, uh, I, let me give you this slide to chat more, to talk more. I mean, it's all right, you're doing a great job. Um, so yeah, as Anita said, um, the more people who get vaccinated, the better pretty much, um, because the vaccine will not only protect you, but also those around you, um, cause it, it likely prevents you from, um, from spreading the, the virus. So we do have just a little bit of a graphic to help walk you through, um, why we are so concerned with the number of people who get vaccinated. So imagine that these, this little matrix of, docs, of dots is a community and the pink dot is the coronavirus. If there's no immunity in the community, meaning no one has had the COVID virus and no one has been vaccinated, then the virus can spread pretty um, wildly and quickly without anything getting in its way. If you are, are in a community where about 45, 50% of people have gotten vaccinated represented by these gray dots, then when the virus tries to spread, it can get pretty far, but it doesn't quite infect as many people as it would if there was no immunity. And then finally, if about 90% of people are immunized, um, the, the people who are vaccinated kind of act almost like a, a brick wall in some way and could maybe make it so that the virus only spreads within a household or within a small friend group, but it won't spread um, as quickly or as widely as if there was no immunity. And thanks, Casey. And uh, to add on to this, how many people need to get vaccinated to prevent the spread of the virus? It's a lot. Um, we estimate, or the best experts estimate, that 70 to 90 percent of the population will need to be immune. Um, actually, Dr. Anthony Fauci even puts this at a little bit higher numbers, like 80, 85, 90 percent. And by immune here, we mean um, people who've been vaccinated and people who are immune because they had a prior COVID-19 infection. Um, but uh, obviously, it's a little bit safer to get immune with the vaccine. So we would want the a large majority of the population to get vaccinated. And if you do get vaccinated, how um, do you need to social distance or wear a mask? And the answer, of course, is yes. Uh, the reason why is that the main job of the vaccine, like all the research that was being done was to make sure this vaccine actually stopped you from getting bad symptoms. Um, sometimes vaccines also have an additional benefit that it, it stops you from even spreading the disease, but it's a little bit uncertain right now if that's the case in, uh, for COVID-19. It'll take a little bit more research. There's some preliminary evidence to show that it can work, but you know, um, if you catch COVID-19 and you're vaccinated, you won't get the symptoms, but you may still have enough to uh, infect someone else. So hence you should social distance and wear a mask. Um, if you've already had COVID-19, so um, you are eligible to get vaccinated. Um, and uh, when we dug through the, the, um, the, the, the study information about Pfizer and Moderna, it was shown that uh, it was very safe for people to get the vaccine if they previously had COVID. Um, however, there were less firm conclusions that could be drawn on how protective the vaccine was against future infections for this particular group. Uh, the one thing to note is that if you are actively, you know, having a, a COVID-19 um, uh, symptoms, you should not get the vaccine. You should wait until you're recovered. And the recovery, of course, may shift depending on um, uh, your particular course of, of, of the disease. 
And of course, you should talk with your doctor on whether you should get the vaccine or not if you've already had COVID-19. And so kind of to sum up, what are things you should think about when making this decision? Um, what are your risks of getting the disease? Um, are you an increased risk? Are you um, contacting a lot of people um, during your day-to-day -day operations? Uh, your risk of spreading the disease. Um, in particular, you know, you could spread the disease to your neighbors, essential workers, um, other people you come in contact with, but especially your loved ones. Um, and this might go doubly if your loved ones happen to be at risk for severe symptoms. Uh, it's the vaccine has been tested for safety and effectiveness. It seems to be quite effective, like 95% of the time, very few side effects. It's been tested in a lot of different people, including people with your certain demographic features, and it should be available to you at a nearby facility without charge. The other thing to note is that to end the pandemic, a large number of people would need to get vaccinated. And uh, that is our presentation, so I uh, would be happy to uh,